glistening thread woven into the illustrious fabric of our cultural heritage is yoga. From times immemorial, the science of yoga was handed down from master to disciple. Yoga in the broadest sense is the science and art of higher life. It is a disciplining of all our powers, physical, mental, moral and spiritual, with a view to a richer and fuller life. Yoga is therefore fivefold. Hatha Yoga, Raja Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga, according to the power taken up for culture. Here, however, we begin with examples of Hatha Yoga. Originally, some of the secrets of yoga were inscribed on leaves of palm. But with the perfection of printing, a vast literature on yoga came into being and even the other nations of the world betook freely through their own tongues of its deep wisdom. Unfortunately, though, many still exploit the fair name of yoga. Eating glass is spectacular and because of its unusualness readily passes as yoga. Any audience will watch such a feat in wide-eyed wonder, and more so when the performer follows it with undiluted nitric acid. But these exploits aren't yoga. Ah, here's a Swami who is always ready to serve suffering humanity. The secret lies in the talisman. Such earnest meditation means time, and time means money in any language, more so in this Swami's. sorts to make a world and such acts have done much to discredit yoga. But the genuine followers of yoga are above such petty concepts for there is no base materialism in yoga. It involves purification, concentration, control, dedication or sublimation of the respective power. The ultimate aim of yoga is to achieve purity and freedom of the spirit. Yoga then is the science of living a pure and healthy life, physically, mentally and spiritually. To help achieve this end, a set of physical exercises called asanas has been evolved which can be followed by anyone of any age, race or creed. Yogic exercises can be practiced daily by every member of the family, for they serve as the foundation for good health. Practice the exercises in a clean and airy place. It's never too young to learn or to benefit from yoga. Here is a yoga institute in Bombay which still preserves the ancient traditions and caters to the needs of our countrymen. For the cure of specific ailments, one should seek guidance from an expert who will first carry out a detailed medical examination. Yogic asanas are divided into two principal groups, meditative and cultural. This asana, Dhanurvakrasana, or the bow curve pose, helps to keep interior and posterior muscles supple. The average man uses only one third of his lung capacity. The expert measures the patient's lung power with a pneumotometer, after which he will be given the proper asanas to develop the use of his lungs and diaphragm. Without the guiding hand of an expert, a knowledge of yogic exercises can be obtained from a book. But such reading should not be taken too literally, for such knowledge may boomerang. Our friend here seems to be sticking pretty close to the printed page. <coughs> No apparatus or implements of any sort are required to perform asanas. Unlike physical culture in the Western style, the accent on asanas is not to develop muscles for the sake of muscles alone. The aim 
of yogic asanas is not bodily strength, but the development of the internal organs without any strain whatsoever. The yoga mudra through compression stimulates the abdominal organs. And through maximum stretch of the spine, it adjusts the vertebrae and increases spinal circulation. For promoting elasticity of the body, there is no better exercise than Paschimottana, the posterior stretching pose. This asana, known as Sarvangasana, or the all body pose, by rapid interchange of blood through gravity and replacement of the abdominal and pelvic organs, helps to combat gastric troubles and constipation. The novice can learn to adopt this position by degrees. If travel broadens one, this man must have been around the world. But the right asanas will take a lot off his mind and other places. Even though of ancient origin, the daily practice of yogic exercises will benefit all who live in the modern world, no matter what profession we follow. Our friend is still wrapped up in his book and in his asana. What he needs is a helping hand. Good, he has one to spare. Shirasana, or the head low posture, commonly called the topsy-turvy pose, is a form of head low exercise that requires great skill and execution. Observe its execution carefully. It is, however, an asana that is extremely beneficial to persons suffering from constipation. The Shirish asana must be practiced in moderation by stages, first a few seconds and then gradually increase to five minutes. It improves the general circulation, especially in the head, and relieves pressure on the distended or compressed internal organs. It is good for the brain and improves the memory. It is also supposed to prevent gray hair. The beneficial effects of yoga are also enjoyed by our women. Here's the Bhujangasana, or the famous cobra pose, specially suitable for women in the exercising of the spine and abdomen and for toning up the pelvic muscles. Vittarita Karni, or reverse process, tones up the pelvic organs. This exercise of Ardha Matyandrasana is used as a lever for the lateral twists of the spine. It stimulates brain activity. Such is the success of yoga in the West that a famous ballet school in Europe has adopted many of the asanas as a part of its curriculum. Suppleness of limb means also a corresponding suppleness of mind. Well, this is what comes of sticking too closely to the printed page. In other words, he's stuck. Ladies and gentlemen, the solution to this crossword, sorry, cross leg, will appear in tomorrow's paper. The Shakti Chalana Mudra, or activating process, is excellent as an internal abdominal massage. By increased inhalation through yoga, the number of breaths per minute is decreased, which makes for longevity and calmness of mind for the brain vibrates with every respiration. This is Bastrika, or bellows breathing, which, by rapidly increasing the supply of oxygen, stimulates the respiratory tract and keeps it perfectly healthy. The aim of yoga is not only bodily strength, but health, stamina, and efficiency of mind, qualities that we all need at work or play in everyday life. Students of yoga attain these qualities no matter how old they are or what they do. With physical and mental good health thus acquired, man can, with further training in yoga, attain the sublimity and freedom of his soul. And when he finally becomes one with the infinite, he enters the realm of eternal peace, which is, and always will be, the supreme aim of man.